Before we talk about the subterranean heating and cooling design tool, I want to just make a few comments about the design of these systems. First off, this name, subterranean heating and cooling system, is sometimes also referred to as a climate battery, and there may also be some confusion around an annualized geosolar system. First off, Subterranean heating and cooling systems use a different design philosophy than annualized geosolar systems, and that design of that system is not included within this tool. A subterranean heating and cooling system is basically an in-floor heating system that uses warm, humid air and a fan duct system to take the energy out of the top of the greenhouse up here and drive it down with a fan underground through a network of pipes and as the air moves through these pipes, the air cools down, dehumidifies, drops its energy and moisture into the soil, and then re-enters back into the greenhouse. These systems typically turn on when the temperature in the greenhouse exceeds a specific threshold temperature, which is typically in the range of 21 to 25 degrees Celsius, and turns off when they go below that threshold temperature, in this case, 21 degrees Celsius. They're then designed to turn back on again once the temperature in the greenhouse drops below a, a certain threshold temperature, let's say 12 degrees Celsius, so that the system has the ability to release heat quickly from the ground back into the greenhouse and prevent it from freezing at night. There's an awful lot of information on the internet showing these systems, but there's not a lot of information around how to design them. So the goal for building this tool was to help people to optimize the design of these systems to increase the chance of their success. In addition, there's not a lot of thermodynamic modeling or research papers that I've been able to find that actually prove that these systems work. However, I'm surrounded by a number of people that are operating greenhouses with these systems that are showing promising empirical results. As such, I've created a, a design tool that focuses around the optimization of fan speed and flow rate and have provided some design directives to help you to have the highest chance of success in the design of your own subterranean heating and cooling system. I feel that the design and installation of small scale systems has merit. However, if you find that your system is quite large and is potentially going to cost large sums of money in order to implement, I believe that it is worthwhile to spend some additional time, energy and money on thermodynamic modeling to ensure that the system that you are going to install will in fact pay dividends. Let's go through a couple of other illustrations to show you how these systems are generally set up and specifically why they're set up in this way. Then we can go into the design tool and show you how to enter in the data so that you can get a result and get on with your design process. Here's just another illustration of the same cross section of the hot air moving through the duct and then through the system and as it's moving through, you can see it's losing energy and then back up into the greenhouse. Here's a three-dimensional view of a typical annualized geosolar system. Notice that these ports that do not have pipes on them are just shown here without pipes so that you can see how they look. But in reality, when they're installed into a system, they would also have pipes connecting between the two systems. Let's give you some vernacular so that you can understand what I'm talking about when we get into the design tool itself. So we're gonna call this pipe here the inlet manifold all the way along here. We're gonna call this pipe over here the outlet manifold. And these are heat pipes that connect between the two systems. There are three main dimensions that you're gonna to need to understand in order to be able to fill out the design tool. Number one is the distance between these pipes. And number two is the number of pipes per lift. So in this case, we're gonna have one two, three. So we'll call these three pipes or these three pipes one lift. You'll notice that these pipes are offset from each other in this situation as we have three pipes per lift. The reason we've done that is to maximize the thermal transmittance into the actual soil itself. So each of these pipes has the most amount of volume of soil around it. Whereas if the pipes were directly overhead of each other, we would not be getting the full ben benefit of the thermal transfer to the actual soil itself. Just because there are three pipes in this particular example does not mean that all systems have to have three pipes. You could actually just do it with one set of pipes or with two sets of pipes. And potentially if the manifold is large enough, you could do it with four. The goal with the design tool is to make sure that we are optimizing the frictional coefficient within all of these pipes, which is gonna optimize the heat transfer. 
If friction coefficients are too high, the air won't move. If it's too low, we will not get the right amount of heat transfer. And so the tool itself focuses on trying to find an optimal range of airflow to find that sweet spot and correct frictional coefficient to make sure that the system is operating at peak efficiency. When we're using the tool, most of what we're going to be doing is sizing the number of these pipes, their diameter, and the number of air changes per hour occurring within the greenhouse. Because we don't know exactly how each of these systems is going to operate in all of the different permutations and combinations of greenhouses, one of the things that the tool does is it allows us to calculate a range of fan speeds so that when you go out to purchase a fan, you'll be able to purchase a variable speed fan with the right range that will give you the largest possibility of success for your subterranean heating and cooling system. There's one more thing that you need to know about the design of these systems. It's really important that the inlet air coming into the inlet manifold is kitty corner to the outlet air on the outlet manifold. The reason for this is so that every molecule of air has to move through the exact same amount of pipe, thus making for an equal distribution of air and ultimately heat. So an air particle that moves through this system right here will go through the exact same distance and type of pipe as an air particle moving through this path on this side right here. So when you're designing your subterranean heating and cooling system, make sure that you're taking this into account and ensuring that all air particles are going to receive an equal amount of friction. If you're looking to design your own passive solar greenhouse and want help in choosing our value for your walls, a glazing material, the amount of heat or size of heater required to heat the greenhouse, your lighting system, thermal mass calculation, as well as designing a subterranean heating and cooling system, you will find that this tool makes passive solar greenhouse design infinitely easier. These videos will show you how to use the tool and if you're interested in purchasing the tool for your own passive solar greenhouse design, you can find information on how to purchase the tool at Small Farm Academy in the link below. Thank you.